Hello everyone, I'm outside by my Easter garden which I've made in this wonderful old tree stump. So on the top we've got the three crosses. The one where Jesus was crucified and the ones for the thieves. And we're told it was a green hill, at least the hymn says it was a green hill, so I've put some green leaves round the bottom of these crosses. But now we're in the season of Easter, Jesus is risen, so I've got flowers at the bottom of the cross, and we often hang white on the cross in church to indicate that Jesus is risen. It symbolises the grave clothes. And then down here, I've got the tomb. And it's empty of a body because Jesus is risen and we've got the grave clothes there and I've used a broken pot to make this a broken dish and of course very careful I don't cut myself on it and we've got an angel guarding the tomb as it tells us in some of the versions of the resurrection in the Bible. So are we ready to begin our service? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's rise and shine. And worship God. So rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory. Children of the Lord. So rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine. And give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Today we're going to go over to the Curry family garden and they've got a game for us where they're trying to identify body parts blindfolded. So it's a game you could play at home and if you wanted to make it harder you could, instead of taking the blindfolded person to the body, you could do it by giving instructions like the hot and cold we did on the Easter egg hunt last week. But let's go and see what they get up to. Good. Right. <laughs> Can I have a guess? Hand. Hand. Good <laughs> Okay. When the disciples saw Jesus alive for the first time, one of them, Thomas, had not been there. The Bible tells us what happened next. Jesus is alive! Well, we, we saw him! him. Jesus' friends told Thomas, I won't believe you until I see Jesus with my own eyes, he said. When the friends met the next week, everyone was happy, except Thomas. How can anyone rise from the dead? He argued. Unless I see his hands and feet, I will not believe. Suddenly, Jesus was standing right there in the room, even though the door was shut. Wow! Wow! Everyone was surprised to see him, especially Thomas. Don't be frightened. Jesus said. It really is me. Thomas, touch my hands and see that I am alive. Then Thomas knew that Jesus had risen from the dead and he believed because he had seen Jesus himself. Thomas, you are glad now. Jesus said. You believe I am alive only because you have seen me with your very own eyes. 
Then Jesus said, In days to come, God's favour will be on those who believe in me, although they have never seen me. We would like to thank Jill Kemp for her retelling of this Bible story and to Richard Gunter for his illustrations. Thank you. Thank you to the Hewson family for reading today's Bible story all about how Jesus appeared to the disciples and Thomas missed him. He must have been fed up. But Jesus came back on another occasion and this time Thomas was there and Jesus asked him to check it was really him to touch his hands. I wonder whether you notice the wounds and Jesus's hands on the pictures where the nails had gone in. Now, today, you might think I'm all ready to cook because I've got my pinny on, but we're going to make fake wounds. And all you need for the fake wounds is some flour and some water, some tissues and some cocoa and some felt pens. I've got a red one here, but a brown one could be quite useful too. So, I find it best to put my bowl on a damp cloth. And then I've got a tablespoon, and I'm going to take a tablespoonful of flour. A rounded tablespoon, about a much above as below, and put it in the bowl. Move that out of the way, and you can see, and then I've got a hundred millilitres of cold water here, and it's important it's cold, it mustn't be hot, and you need to pour it onto the flour, and whisk, 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 whisk it all together. And try to get as many lumps out as you can. And again, you need to have a grown-up around when you're doing this, and particularly for the next bit, because it needs to be cooked. So, I'm going to put it in the microwave. And you need to remember always to have oven gloves around if you're putting anything in a microwave. It might be cold on the way in, but it's hot on the way out. So put it in for a minute. And then give it another good stir, and it was gone a bit thicker and sticky by this point. And then I put it in again for another 30 seconds. Oven gloves, remember? Grown up to do this. And out again safely. Then you need to put it to one side to cool because it's going to be hot. And you need to leave it to cool for quite a long time, maybe a few hours. Maybe you do this before you have a meal and come back to it later or even the next day. And when it comes out of the microwave, it should be very thick and sticky. Ooh, it's a lot harder to stir this time. And if it's got a bit of a skin on it, don't worry about that. Just give it a good mix. There we go, all nice and thick and sticky. Now, if I put this against my skin, it's not really my skin color, is it? So we need to color it. And this is where the cocoa comes in. So, take some cocoa. You don't need a lot of cocoa for this to start with anyway. And it's a bit lumpy, so I'm using a sieve. Just squeezing it through the sieve. Mmm, I can smell the chocolatey smell, but we're not eating this. And then give it a good mix up again. And how much you put in depends on what your skin colour is. So it's always easier to put more in, so just put a little bit of it at first and just give it a good, good 
stir together. Now, I have made some earlier, so I've managed to get some which is my skin colour. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a blister on my skin. Can you imagine that? I've got just enough here to make a nice blister. It's a bit lumpy, but that doesn't matter because, you know, wounds often are a bit lumpy. I wonder if they do them like this in the theatre. Then you need a tissue. And if you fold it in pieces, into halves and quarters, and then it's best to tear this and you just tear a piece of tissue and doing several together because again it's easier to tear when it's folded to about the size of your wound that you're making and then I've made quite a few now you want to have a bowl of water and just dip it in like this, gently. And carefully let the water run up it. And don't worry too much, in fact it's easier if you don't get it totally wet. And then you can put it over your wound and just pat it down. There's a bit too much tissue, you can pat it down a bit more so it doesn't show. And then you can go up to somebody or maybe take a photo of it and say, Oh, look what's happened to me! And everyone will be really sympathetic. But then you can go, Look, I'm all right now. Surprise, surprise, I'm all better. And if you want to, if you've got some dolls around, you can put the wound on them. And I managed to make this so dark, so it matched baby, this is baby Anne, it matched her skin. And I, you did that with cocoa, and then I just added a little bit of red and brown felt pen to it to make it match really well. So there you go. That's a bit different, isn't it? Making fake wounds. So we're going to listen to the Bible story again. And this time, make sure you spot those wounds on Jesus's hands. And this is how we can be really sure that it was Jesus who was risen from the dead because he had the nail marks in his hands and in his feet. And if you see pictures of him elsewhere in art, you'll know it's a risen Jesus with those wounds. When the disciples saw Jesus alive for the first time, one of them, Thomas, had not been there. The Bible tells us what happened next. Jesus is alive, we, we saw, saw him! him. Jesus' friends told Thomas, I won't believe you until I see Jesus with my own eyes, he said. When the friends met the next week, everyone was happy, except Thomas. How can anyone rise from the dead? He argued. Unless I see his hands and feet, I will not believe. Suddenly, Jesus was standing right there in the room, even though the door was shut. Wow! Wow! Everyone was surprised to see him, especially Thomas. Don't be frightened. Jesus said. It really is me. Thomas, touch my hands and see that I am alive. Then Thomas knew that Jesus had risen from the dead and he believed because he had seen Jesus himself. Thomas, you are glad now. Jesus said. You believe I am alive only because you have seen me with your very own eyes. Then Jesus said, In days to come, God's favour will be on those who believe in me, although they have never seen me. We're going to sing the song, Be Bold, Be Strong, which we sung at Rise and Shine services in the pastoral centre, and I know many of you sing it at school as well. 
be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid, no, 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 I am not dismayed, not me, for I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid, no, 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 I am not dismayed, not me, for I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory, for the Lord your God is with you. I hope you're enjoying making some of the things we've shared at Rise and Shine. And I'd like to say thank you to Iris for sending in her thank you picture. Isn't this wonderful? If you want to send in some pictures of things you've made, please do so. And if you've already sent in an Easter garden picture, you'll be able to see that on YouTube later today with some wonderful organ music playing to it. I've got baby Anne out here in the garden with me for our prayers because I'm thinking about wounds and we all get wounded at times, don't we? We can fall and hurt ourselves or blisters appear or we can be hurt by words that people say. And of course, at this time, we're thinking of all the people who are ill or in hospital, wounded in a different way. So we're going to hold all these people and these situations before God because the Lord is with us. Jesus is risen from the dead and we can be sure that his love endures everything and is always with us. So let's pray. And you might want to hold a doll as you pray. Loving Lord, we come before you aware of the wounds that people have. Sometimes they've fallen and hurt themselves. Sometimes they've been hurt by unkind words. Sometimes diseases make us poorly and give us wounds inside and on our bodies. We pray that at these times you will make us bold and strong that you will help those who are caring for others with wounds. You'll make them bold and strong. And that you will surround us all by your love, which is with us at all times. Amen. And now we pray the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we're coming to the end of our Rise and Shine service for today. We'll be back next Sunday, but for now, Rowena is going to sing our blessing prayer, and I hope you'll all join with, in with her at home. God in heaven, hear my prayer. Keep me in thy loving care. Be my guide in all I do. Bless all those who love me too. God in heaven, hear my prayer. Keep me in thy loving care.